or into their computers that can be accessed anywhere, anytime. So we can do this right from the hometown, wherever that is. Monumental security operation involving $900 million. Fighter planes. Could have had some on the East Coast. Maybe we could have seen where those missiles went, eh? Two miniature submarines, warships. Well, we don't have too many of those probably on the East Coast now. 4,000 troops, all guarding a ski slope and a hockey arena. You know, somebody picks up one of those curling things. I guess they do curling at the Olympics, you know, and you put that in like a big rubber band and just, whoa! Let that puppy go. You know how many people you could hurt with that? It's not like they're missiles or anything. You can shoot those to the East Coast all you want. Lots of protests. Maybe some of those protesters are agent provocateurs, eh? Media spin on a lot of terror threats. Be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. And just watch those antidepressants. Invest in those babies, eh? Get those antidepressant sales. Get the uh, disposable diapers going because there's going to be a lot of fluids passing. Tom Clancy writes novels, and some of them kind of hint about terrorism in Vancouver in 2010. And he also was quite timely in writing a book about a Russian-Georgian war. Hmm, good timing there, Tom. Good timing. I think he wrote a lot of submarine books, too. Any missile shooting in the East Coast? I've forgotten. These events end on February the 28th. Parliament opens on March 3rd. A lot of mention about the Toronto 18. Well, we probably do it better. And then a big hydro vault explosion in downtown Vancouver where three workers were killed. Good way to lay down some wire, eh? Set off that two tons of ammonium nitrate. And the government bought 3,200 tickets for a million dollars. Well, isn't that nice? Now I know why they prorogue Parliament. They're going to the Olympics, and you're paying for it. Then the scary thing is, a lot of the people who bought those tickets, two days they were sold out, eh? Well, now you can buy them again, because a lot of the people that first bought them, well, you know what? They checked their horror scopes and found out maybe it wasn't the best place in the world to go. So what we have here from uh, Brother John was this little uh, star map here. I guess we can see that sort of, but uh, it's the numbers that matter. When these games commence, February 12, 2010, at 1800 hours, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the star Sirius, the famous star in the constellation Canis Major, Big Dog, will be rising on the horizon in the east. Curious, at the same time, Mesa, the head star of the constellation, Orion the Hunter, will be at 33 degrees. 33 degrees. Where have I heard that before? 33. Oh, those are those Freemason suckers. Yes, yes. They like to do nice things, eh? Then at the same time, in Olympia, Greece, Sirius is setting in the horizon in the west. So I guess we could say it's in the stars. Maybe some of these people know it's in the stars, so they're selling their tickets. Why lose the money if you're not going to, you know, you, you go and you find those two tons of ammonium nitrate under your seat. You may be a missile going across the sky, so you probably wouldn't want that. Then we find out there's all kinds of suspicious movements of real estate. So as I was looking on who owns what and how and uh, such like this, I come across some companies that just blow me away. A lot of them are numbered companies. But one of the uh, the big ones, Robert J. McDonald, owns a big real estate company. He's buying a lot of land, and he was affiliated with uh, other companies, another company called 4255 Investments. He's on the board there with a Derek M. Trithui. They changed their name to the Texada Land Corporation in time. Then you find out that uh, there's a lot of lawsuits in British Columbia. I guess that was before they froze all the uh, public inquiries going on. If here's this, uh, this one guy, Trithui, uh, got in a little trouble with some casinos here and there, and there's lots of uh, litigation going on, and then some other companies that the other chaps affiliated with, they're being sued. So there's a lot of action there. And then one of the big land deals that just flew me away is, uh, you know, the, he got this old town. It was one of those old mining towns, the company town. A lot of good songs written on that. Britannia Beach. It's kind of on the trail to Whistler for some strange reason on Highway 99 or Route 99, which is your 66 upside down, I guess. You could play some 666 numbers with that. Just not a nice place to be sometimes. A lot of bad luck there. 
March 21, 1915, an avalanche destroyed Jane Camp. Sixty men, women, and children were killed. March 1921, Mill No. 2 burned to the ground. October 28, 1921, a massive flood destroyed much of the portion of the community. I think I remember that in one of those disaster shows. More recent times, 1991, a flood occurred when a dam broke. 1975, BC Mining Museum was open to the public, so they'll have control of that and a good place to put maybe something underground in some of the mine tunnels. That's what I was looking at. Summer of 2003, the town was purchased by McDonald Development Corporation. $30 million refits going on, so good timing uh, with these chaps. I'm not all that familiar with the uh, the big real estate deals and some of the company things on the uh, West Coast, so uh, this was all news to me. One of the ones that uh, I did like is he bought 11,900 acres, that's 911 backwards, from a former, well, I guess he's not a former princess, he's still a princess. She was a princess, a German princess, uh, who married into good money, Princess Gloria, and they call her Princess TNT, good place to go when you're near exploding Olympics, I guess TNT has a lot of value there, from the royal family of Thurn and Taxis. Uh, the head of that family uh, was born in 1926. She married him, you know, great difference in age. So he was born in 1960, and uh, you know he was a billionaire, one of the richest men in Germany, if he wasn't the richest man in Germany, and uh, she just had like the party life of party lives. But one of the things that's just kind of a little bizarre, and this is probably more into uh, you know the line of Lenny's usual thing with the Vatican assassins, she's good friends with the Pope, for one thing. Her family, the family tree, goes back. They ran the post office for the Romans. Way, way, way back into the 12th century. The family name Tasso, meaning badger, a mountain village uh, of Cornello near the Cornello Al. Tasso uh, comes from there. The other name, Taxis, comes from the German Dax and the family coat of arms. So they changed their name to Thurn Tower and Taxis. They received a princely title from the Holy Roman Emperor Leopold I and then had complete control of the post office until the late 18th century, and that must have been quite quite a thing. And then, of course, uh, the family has a lot of people who are Knights of Malta, and I think that has a lot of significance, too. They still have a big castle. She's trying to make ends meet with her $2 million in the castle, but uh, we just have to wonder, uh, you know, what someone who has a lot of fine detail with the Knights of Malta, Opus Dei, the Vatican Assassin Network, the Pope is, is good buddies with her. And remember, the Pope used to be the chief interlocutor. That's a nice, funny name they have uh, for uh, this chap. Usually that's the guy who get it. In the old days, he was the one who put the burning stake on you or uh, tortured you or stretched you out to be 12 feet long or something like that. So, uh, you know, just a horrid, horrid uh, office or reputation to have to be the head of a, of a Christian church, I think. I think he's kind of like pave it over and we'll start fresh and uh, maybe do it the old-fashioned way with uh, Jesus at the top or something like that. Then another really funny thing for people backing out at the last minute, these are the big guys, the power brokers, the money barons, Wall Street financiers are going to put the Whistler Blackcomb Resort up for sale. Creditors who have loaned 1.4 billion U.S. to ski resort owners IntraWest ULC have effectively seized control of the company and are attempting to auction off its assets. A note of a public auction is to be held February 19, 2010. Wall Street hedge fund Fortress Investments LLC bought IntraWest in a $2.8 billion U.S. deal. Fortress recently missed a $524 million debt payment connected to that purchase. The primary lender uh, on the IntraWest deal in 2006 is the defunct investment bank Lehman Brothers. The auction uh, will not happen until the games have begun. So that's kind of bizarre that you're going to auction off the place they're holding the games while they're holding the games. Uh, it kind of leaves the city of Vancouver on the hook for a billion-dollar price tag. 
conducting some of these Olympic villages and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, that really tells us, I think, that we're in a kerfuffle when we're looking at the fact that the big money breakers are pulling out of their own uh, their own thing, the Olympic Games, which is it means more to them than anything in the world. And, you know, one of the other news stories, sometimes we talk about like little codes and stuff. I know I, I came across this years ago in the States because this is an American company and 